Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 7th, and it's a beautiful day here in southeast Pennsylvania. Yes, I checked, it is April 7th. Uh, it's one of those days. Off to a slow start today, but all is good. It's, it's a nice, uh, nice, sunny, slightly cloudy Sunday, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing pretty much nothing today, because it's been a... Uh, it, it was it was nice having a break last week. By the way, happy Easter to everyone. I, I took last week off, and I hope you all had a wonderful Easter. Uh, got to spend some time with your friends and family and do all that kind of good stuff. Uh, yeah, just rough week at work because it was kind of compressed because I took Monday off. And, and then yesterday I did a bunch of yard work, and I just, I just want to break, you know. My wife's still in Pittsburgh, so I'm going to, I'm going to watch some, some, uh, TV. I'm going to watch a baseball game this afternoon. The Phillies are playing about 1.30, playing the Nationals. Finally winning some games, but then again, they're playing the Nationals. So. Anyway, uh, that's my plan for today, but that's not what I want to talk about. So before I go any further, I've got my J. Mouton Lavat, one of the twin pipes with my buddy Couch, and I have it loaded with Haunted Bookshop. Because we have made a change to how we're doing the tobacco of the week. It's no longer the tobacco of the week. It's now the tobacco of the month. We had to change that because otherwise I would be generating weekly jars of tobaccos because I'd be opening up new tins. And it would just create more of a problem than I already have with the backlog of tobaccos. So we're going to do one a month. And uh, it'll be the first Friday of the month, assuming I can remember. And we'll do the same thing. We'll review it. And maybe I'll do a little bit more in depth. Like maybe I'll smoke it uh, for a couple of weeks during the month uh, on, on Sundays just to sort of give you my changing impressions or something like that. We'll see how it goes. But right now I'm enjoying Haunted Bookshop. So I wanted to talk today about movies and entertainment in general. Well visual entertainment, I guess, movies, TV shows, that, that kind of thing. Uh, I've been watching a lot of horror sci-fi kind of stuff from uh, 1970 through 1980, like just that, the 70s, <laughs> I could have simplified that, I suppose. Uh, there's something about those films, and, and I, I can't quite put my finger on what it is, but there's a sense of atmosphere that they have that I don't see in any other films. And what's interesting about it is this is true whether it's made for TV or a theatrical release. The, the, the quality, it, it, not, not the quality of the film necessarily, but, but the writing and the acting, it creates an atmosphere that I don't see in in uh, films outside of that era. And, and I'm not saying that that's bad for the other films you know it's not like I'm, I'm trying to bash modern film although there's a lot about modern film I don't like but that's not the point the point is there was something special about that time and uh, I know because of the title card my buddy Mark is watching this because I, I, I specifically put Kolshak the Night Stalker in there to, to get his attention but those uh, three things that I picked and I could have picked so many more uh, they kind of represent that feel that I'm, that I'm talking about. Uh, Night Stalker uh, was, I think, 1974. Yeah, it was seven, 73, 74. Um, really great TV. So there was a couple of made-for-TV movies. There was The Night Stalker and The Night Strangler. And then it became a series, uh, all starring uh, Darren McGavin. Fantastic series. If you haven't seen it, you gotta, you got to see it. Uh, the the next one, I believe, in order would have been the Omen. Uh, the yeah, the Omen was released in '76, right? Because of the six. That has an atmosphere to it that you just you don't see it in modern film. You just really don't see it. And then one that I had not seen until just recently, the Medusa Touch, uh, uh, Richard Burton. Unbelievably good movie and. 
There are special effects in that movie, which was made in 1978, that I still cannot believe are from 1978. There, there, there's, a, there's a plain scene, and I won't go beyond that because you've got to see the movie, but there's, there's a scene involving a plane that I just cannot imagine how they did it in 1978. And I could have added others. Uh, another great one is The Changeling, George C. Scott. Um, the Changeling was 1980, actually, so I could have actually done the 70s every two years. Anyway, <laughs> another great movie. Uh, and I didn't mean to pick so many Lee Remick uh, films, but uh, not, that, not that there's anything wrong with Lee Remick, but that's just a coincidence. <laughs> I guess she was big in, in that time frame. Anyway, I don't quite know what it is. Again, it's the atmosphere of the films. You know, maybe it's even the quality of the film. It might be that they were using a different type of photographic process at the time or something. But I would so much rather watch, you know, Richard Burton, uh, who, <laughs> it's going to sound funny, but he's in a coma for most of the movie. <laughs> but I would rather watch that than some of these modern slasher films. Again, not that I'm beating on them. I'm just saying what interests me personally is this, this, this craft of building this atmosphere, building this world, uh, but not making it so far into your world that you can't feel like you're a part of it. And the spookiness, you know, the, the, the changeling, uh, the, the ball scene, the ball bouncing down the steps scene, it's chilling and it's not very complicated. Uh, yeah, there's just there's just so much about those movies that really impact me at a at a much deeper level than something like oh I don't know Hellraiser, which I still haven't watched because I I I was at one point terrified to watch. I I don't know if you remember the story. I told it on a live stream a while back. I rented Hellraiser from the video store back. For you kids, we used to have video stories. Anyway, I rented Hellraiser and I put it in and I watched about 10 minutes of it and I just said, oh no, I'm not watching. And I lived alone at the time and you know, I was younger. And ever since then, I've that's been like a movie that I just, eh, I'm not. and now I've seen more of it from, you know, watching reviews of it and things like that. And I've realized that I'm no longer... I no longer don't want to watch it because I'm afraid about the emotional impact it's going to have on me in terms of terror, but it's more in terms of disgust and grossness. Like, I don't want to see that stuff. It's not that it's going to scare me, it's just going to make me uneasy. So I'd much rather watch a, a film that had very little in the way of special effects, but built that, that emotional impact through acting and through writing. And yeah, I guess maybe that's what's different about those films. I don't know. I rambled a bit there, but I've been watching a lot of these lately and I wanted to share that with you. And one thing I do definitely want to share, and I will put a link in the description for this. There is a channel. Got, I don't know these guys. I just stumbled upon them. Uh, they're called uh, Newcastle After Dark. And they are showing these movies on their channel. And it's a great format. They start off the show, they introduce the, the movie, and then they play half the movie. And then they have a short break in the middle where they say, you know, this is what happened to this point. Let's watch the rest of it. And then they come back at the end and kind of wrap it up. S total screen time for these guys is maybe 20 minutes out of a two hour video. The rest of it, you're watching the actual film. And it's just a great way to see some of these old movies. That's how I saw the Medusa touch which I had never never seen and probably never would have seen if it wasn't for Newcastle After Dark. So if you like this kind of film, if, if you like The Night Stalker, because they do a lot of made-for-TV stuff as well as uh, theatrical releases, uh, you like this era of filmmaking and you like this kind of horror genre, uh, check out Newcastle After Dark again. There'll be a link down in the description for that. So, yeah, hope that was enjoyable for you. gave me something to chat about. And again, I'm not 
I'm not trying to say that there's nothing good made anymore, because I know people sometimes do say that, and that's, it's harder to find, you know? It's definitely harder to find, and I think that's because there's just so much more, it's, it's so easy to get things out there now, you know? Back in the 70s, if you wanted to have a theatrical release, you, there was a big bottleneck there because very few movies would have gone forward. Um, you know, I can remember, if a movie came out in the summer, you basically had three months to see it. Now it seems like movies are, they come and go in a matter of a week or two. Uh, We've got all these streaming services. We've got Netflix. We've got made for Netflix. We've got made for Amazon Prime. Uh, there's a lot of ways that entertainment can be produced now. And that means that there's not a lot of advertising dollars to go around. It all gets diluted out across that. And the quality is going to vary greatly because the barrier is lower. So, yeah, there's some bad stuff around. But there's some good stuff, too. And, you know, I, I've talked about on the live stream a uh, Netflix series that I watched called Dark, D-A-R-K, Dark. Fantastic. German made. Really enjoyed it. Uh, time travel, but time travel kind of done right. And, and uh, that's rare. I just started yesterday watching uh, Netflix, The Three Body Problem, because it's gotten so much attention lately. I thought, well, this is something worth at least looking at. And, and I... I've seen two episodes, and you know what? Story-wise, not bad. Effects-wise, not bad. But it's got a message, you know. It's got if if you if you watch it and, and with an open mind, <laughs> nobody in this movie that's a man is in any way whatsoever competent. If you're a man, you're either incompetent or you're evil or you're critically flawed in some way. Uh, all the uh, women are brilliant. Uh, they're going to save the day and, and they're going to, you know, they're the only ones that understand anything. I have no problem with a strong female lead. I just have a problem with a message being dumped on me like that. So yeah, that's unfortunate because it was otherwise a, a really good story and a well-crafted uh, visual experience. So I can't recommend that one. I don't know if I'm going to finish it, to be honest. Uh, it just annoys me. Anyway, yeah, so that's the entertainment update for this week. Uh, that's what you all tuned in for, wasn't it? Yeah. So, like I said, today I am just going to pretty much do nothing and watch a baseball game. And uh, I might make some pulled chicken for dinner. My wife's back on Tuesday, so I have to feed myself for a couple more days. And uh, she'll be back for a couple of days, and then we have to go. She has to get a, a um, medical test on Thursday. And uh, if you guys don't mind keeping her in prayer, I would really appreciate that. Uh, it's It's not... We're, we're confident that it's not a big deal, but it's one of those things that you got to follow up on. So, uh, yeah, prayers would be appreciated for my wife. And, yeah, other than that, just going to make the dogs happy and see what the rest of the day might bring. So I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. I hope you're looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.